Hey, what's up guys, DMJ here. And today I'm gonna show you what I've been working on. The classic, the legend, Warhammer Quest 1995. I got this set put together a few weeks back. Didn't say much about it. And uh, I, I played a game of it, got my ass whooped. But even though you get your ass whooped at it, it's an awesome game. That's why it's legendary. It's the best solo Dungeons & Dragons experience, really, that you can have. Because everything is so random and just kind of D&D &D old school-like. You can die really quickly. Like, there's some stuff um, that, like, there's a, a, an avalanche card that most people just take out. Because you can make it really far and then it just kills you right away. You can be a purist and play like that. Or you can just take that card out, you know? And then there's like a three Minotaur card where you're probably just gonna die too. But that's the chances of drawn from a deck. If you get that card, things like that could really have happened. So it's kind of cool to leave those in there. Anyways, I had some pretty bad rolls and I kept rolling a one and getting more and more monsters coming out. And I was like, ended up surrounded by goblins with spears and they just beat my ass. And so uh, it was still a lot of fun. I want to get a lot more into this game just because of kind of what's going on with D&D right, right now with me. Here's what the conclusion that I've came to. Okay, so you guys know, if you look back over the years, I'm pretty involved in the YouTube channel from like September, October, until like March or February, kind of the springish. So basically fall through winter and then like into spring. And then during the summertime, I'm super busy. I'm going out and I'm doing stuff. And I kind of play more war game-ish type stuff because it's quick and it's easy and it's fast and there's not a lot to, you know, with the D&D adventures, you've got to prepare adventures and hours and hours of work and mind mental gymnastics and for me it's whatever's going on with the company is running through my brain and all of this kind of stuff so during the summertime when I'm out more I'm just playing war games I'm doing real fast 45 minute games um the Dungeons and Dragons uh, miniature game that I picked up I'm going to be playing some more of that gotta be honest we had a lot of fun with it but the general consensus, I think, for what most people are saying, and we kind of felt that it, it's just a bit much. It's not like the old D&D &D miniatures game where you spend points and you put together a warband of your miniatures and you fight. I mean, you've got, you know, a card that's got a couple of little abilities on it. You check them off if you use them, and that's that. With, the, um, with Onslaught, there's five characters, which is five cards they kind of it's fifth edition so every character has all this stuff there's all these dials to continue to move and keep track of and oh i get an experience points if i hit somebody or oh i get an experience points if i do this it's different for every single character you're constantly scanning the cards it's a bit much it was fun but it was a bit much uh so Basically, um, I had my local game store contact me. They wanted me to run a game day for it, and I, I just politely refused uh, because it's like I told them. I said, you know, I invested a lot of money in Dungeon Command back in the day, and which is another Wizards of the Coast Miniatures game that was put out, and they just let it go. You know, there's a lot of disappointed people with that, and I told them, I said, you know, I, I don't know what I'm going to invest in this game because... The feedback is kind of mixed reviews, and while I did have fun with it, I'm not going to dump a bunch of money into this game if nobody's going to be playing the thing. So we'll see. That's kind of like a, a, it's one of those things of we'll see with that. Um, but with Warhammer Quest, it's a legend. It's like Hero Quest. It's already in the books as a legendary game, even though it's hard, even though there's people people say stuff's wrong with it and I've talked to a bunch of people and they're like, no, come on. I mean, there's, of course, there's some things that will kill you, 
but it's a random card out of a deck. I mean, that can happen to anybody. So, but like I said, this thing is still played. The community is still huge with this. There is some creators who have done some phenomenal things with this. And it's kind of like those war games, uh, sort of like uh, Mordheim and Song of Blades of Heroes that I also play, where it's cool because you're, you don't just go through a dungeon. Like, you know, the, the pandemic, the, the, the pandemic, uh, if you want to call it that, kind of locked everybody in and everybody was wanting to play solo games. Well, this happens to be the one of the best. And I mean, I can kind of show you guys, if anybody's interested, um, how I made my set. I'm going to go through it here with you guys in just a second. But it's real kind of, um, here's the thing with it. There's so much information out there and so many people have so much stuff. You got to find the right thing to do from the beginning. Uh, and, and luckily for me, I was. Now, as I was saying, there's some creators that are making a ton of content for this game. And, uh, and I guess the point, I should get to the point that I was talking about before with the other miniatures games that I play is it's not just you're just going through a dungeon here. There is you're getting gold and after the dungeon you go to town, you spend your money, you can go in like gambling. They have all these um, like expansions like where you can like go into gambling houses and there's event cards in the city that goes on. There's like all this stuff that makes this a, a campaign for a single person to play. Like you don't have to get people together. You don't have to depend on people showing up. You don't have to put up with people's crap. If you just want a, an old school D&D experience, this is for you. Okay, so let's take the camera down and check out what I made. So here are the character cards. All of these cards have been uh, these are just heavy cardstock um, glued back to back. So they, they're like super thick. Uh, you got the items that the characters start with. Um, we got all of these little pieces that I made. Uh, we've got the, all the different cards, the event decks, the dungeon uh, cards, the spell cards, and the treasure cards. Uh, they're just all heavy cardstock, um, cut out and then put into sleeves. They don't have to be perfect. You know, if I love this game, I'll spend the $700 to buy it. Jeez. But I will if I love the game enough, you know. I just don't want to get too invested until I really find out if I, I love it. Um, but yeah, it's super simple to make uh, and just a, a version to get you going. I proxied in a bunch of D&D miniatures. Um, we got spiders and rats and... Um, what's really great is I have a lot of uh, Lord of the Rings miniatures, and they just happen to work for this perfect. So like uh, goblins with spears and goblin men, and um, yeah, the, they, they work perfectly. There's a few other ones. So I figured why not just go like, um, you know, theme this Lord of the Rings. And so I've got the barbarian, wizard, dwarf, and elf, and that works absolutely perfect for Aragorn, Gandalf, Gimli, and Legolas. So I might just uh, use those guys, or I got some D&D minis. But I'm going to use these for the doors. Tiamat's not in the game. Um, I'm going to proxy in uh, the Lord of the Rings uh, trolls as the uh, minotaurs. Or I've got the minotaurs right here, depending on whatever feel I'm going for. These are giant bats that I had bought from Reaper. Uh, until that point, I'm just going to use Sturges and uh, these um, flying skull things. I can't remember what they're called. Um, but yeah, just just keep it real simple and uh, just get a game going. This is the main part over here is the the tiles, and you could probably just use Wizards of the Coast tiles um, for these. But um, these are made a bit bigger than the original tiles. Uh, they're uh, one and a half inch grid, so you can get like minotaurs and stuff on there. They're not as scrunched up. But I mounted these on chipboard or one of those mounted them on there. Now that might look a little bent, but um, I got the camera in one hand, but you can totally just like bend these and they will go right back into place. So it's super cool. But yeah, I made up a bunch of tiles uh, for the game. They look really great. They printed out great. And uh, yeah, so if you guys are interested in any of this, 
Uh, let me know if you, you want to know anything about this game. And uh, don't be alarmed if I change the channel name again to Dice Life TV, because that's usually the war game name that I use when I'm doing war games. So, uh, and Dice Life kind of includes all dice, right? So um, I'm sure the channel will go back to D&D stuff, you know, next year around fall time. Um, so don't run away. You know, if you don't want to watch the war games, just don't watch them. Um, but, you know, the one cool thing I'd like to tell you um, about, you know, Song of Blades and Heroes and about these miniatures game is if you're a Dungeons and Dragons player, um, you don't get to use your miniatures. You use just a few miniatures per adventure. And with war games, the, at least the war games that I play, you can stat up any of your miniatures and play with them all the time. That's what I wanna do. <laughs> I wanna play with my miniatures. And so your war bands can include any of the miniatures that you have. You can just stat them up um, with the programs. So it's super cool. And what you're looking at here isn't even close to a fraction of the miniatures that I've got. Um, they're all in the closet here behind me. But yeah, so anyways, uh, I'm gonna sign off. And I will catch you guys in the next video. See ya.